Every student in Campusville liked Christmas a lot. But Mr. Finch, who lived just north of Campusville, did not. Mr. Finch hated Christmas, the whole Christmas season. Now please don't ask why. No one quite knew the reason. It could be that his head was screwed on a little too tight. Or perhaps that his poodle wasn't quite right. But I think the most likely reason of all may have been that he had a cat. Whatever the reason, his cat or his poodle, he stood on his porch hating the stoodles, staring up from his house as a shadowy form at the warm lighted windows above the dorms. For he knew every stoodle in Campusville above was decorating campus with their hearts full of love. And they're hanging their lights. He snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas. That's practically here. Then he growled with his slender fingers nervously drumming. I must find a way to stop Christmas from coming. For tomorrow, he knew, all the student girls and boys would wake bright and early and they would start to make noise. And then, oh, the noise. Oh, the noise. The noise, 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 noise. That's one thing he hated, the Christmas sounds of joy. Then the students, young and old, would sit down to a feast. And they'd feast, and they'd feast, and they'd feast, feast, feast. They would feast on King's chicken and mm, panda Chinese, which was something Mr. Finch could not stand in the least. And then they'd do something he liked least of all. Every stoodle down in Campusville, they'd stand hand in hand, and the stoodles would start singing. They'd sing, and they'd sing, and they'd sing, sing, sing. And the more Mr. Finch thought of this stoodle Christmas sing, the more Mr. Finch thought, I must stop this whole thing. Why, for 123 years, I've put up with it now. I must stop this Christmas from coming. But how? Then he got an idea. An awful idea. Mr. Finch got a wonderful, awful idea. I know just what to do. Mr. Finch <laughs> laughed in his throat. <laughs> I will wrap up my cat in this little cat coat. Then I will leave this nasty surprise with an even nastier note. If that cat doesn't ruin their lives like he ruined mine, then I'll eat my own coat or a plate full of chives. With a few swift alterations, he tailored his clothes into a stoodle disguise with a long, pointy nose. Then with a click and a keystrokes chime, he ordered some shoes from Amazon Prime. Now I'll sneak into their festive affair, and when I'm among them, I'll catch them unaware. Yes, I'll pretend to be jolly with a wide doodle grin. And when they least suspect it, yes, that's when my plan will begin. <laughs> So Mr. Finch, in disguise, slipped into the crowd, a stoodle among stoodles, yelling quite loud. He joined in the singing, the laughter, the cheer, and little did they know the danger that was near. As the night grew later, Mr. Finch dropped his act and snuck away to the tree's shadows to begin his attack. As he placed the cat beneath the stoodle's tree, his plan was complete, and that's when he decided that revenge was quite sweet. But just as he thought he had them deceived, a small stoodle child popped from under the tree. She looked up at Mr. Finch with innocent eyes and said, Mister, what's wrong with your poodle? Caught by surprise, Mr. Finch faltered and staggered, yet Cindy Loodle with courage continued to badger. You're not a real stoodle, Cindy exclaimed. But it's all right, mister, no need to be blamed. She smiled and said, I think I know your poodle shrub him. It's allergic and he's Claritin on the devil. And on second glance, you don't look too swell. It wouldn't hurt if you took some as well. Mr. Finch was taken aback by her clever insight, and he knew immediately Cindy Loodle must be right. Cindy called for her mum, who offered them both a Claritin pill, and to everyone's surprise, Mr. Finch and his poodle started to heal. As Mr. Finch looked at the stoodles with unblurry eyes, he began to feel bad and started to cry. Cindy Loodle's kindness had pierced through his heart of hate, and Mr. Finch realized it's never too late. The Stoodles, with grace, forgave his wrongs, 
but in the spirit of Christmas, hearts can be strong. And so, in Campusville, a tale was spun of redemption and love second to none. For Mr. Finch, who once stole Christmas with glee, now sat with his cat and his poodle under the student's Christmas tree.